Sprang ist eine alte Bindungsart, bei der nicht gewebt, sondern geflochten wird. I'm working on a piece that will be a belt for the German Archaeology Institute. And this is a belt that was found in association with a mummy. Oh, a very interesting pair of trousers. And in order to display the trousers, you need to have a belt. So I'm making the belt. And it has a very interesting pattern. The only way we seem to be able to replicate this pattern is by a braiding technique. And um, this braiding technique lends itself very nicely to sprang. So it needs to be a two meter long belt. And I only need to make one meter because the other half of it will just make itself. Let me show you how this works. I have a string tied here at the bottom and it goes back and forth, back and forth between these two bars. So if I slide my finger up here at the top, I have the threads arranged in this up, down, up, down arrangement that weavers really like. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a bit of a braid. I'm going to twist them in pairs all the way across. So now they're twisted here and they're also twisted at the bottom. The second row, the threads need to have a different partner. So I'm going to start by picking up two and I put one down and then up, down, up, down. They're twisting around a, a new partner this time and the, the row that starts with two down ends with two up. But what happens is I get more happening at the bottom. These two rows alternate. I keep working. It, uh, there's no weft. There's no sideways thread, but only these lengthwise threads. And each time I work here, I get something down there at the bottom. That's what we mean by spraying. There are several different structures that you can do, but basically it's a braiding structure where the threads are set on a frame. For every one row of work, you get two rows of cloth. There are two kinds of working. This, this one is called flat warp and it works from outside to the middle. I can cut this apart or I could work all the way to the middle and then I can do something to finish in the middle. Then it's one large rectangle with two pieces. Now, there is another way of working where I take the threads around and around and around as on this piece. And every time I work here, I'm going to push over to here. So on this type of work, it starts at a middle line and it grows out this way. I can continue working and then have a seam here at the bottom where it joins, or I could cut it apart and have one very long rectangle. I select the threads in groups of four and they twist in groups of fours. There are pairs that always stay the same. So this white pair, these two threads always stay the same and these brown ones stay the same all the time, but they keep encountering other pairs. It's called intertwining. Twining means two. You have groups, pairs of threads that are traveling to the right and there's an other, other pairs of threads that are traveling to the left. So each stitch, if you will, is a place where two pairs meet. And the way that they meet, sometimes like here, we want the white ones to be on the outside. So the white pair goes around the brown. And there are other times we want the brown pair to be on the outside. So the white pair goes through the middle and the brown pair goes around the outside, depending on what row I'm on and on which stitch. There we are, the brown pair on the outside. And now this one, we have the white pair on the outside brown pair on the inside. Okay, that's the end of that row. So now we're gonna push down, push this down, push, push, push all the way down. Um, I could take it all the way around to the other side, but what I tend to do is I leave them collect here at the bottom, several rows, and then I'll push them around the other way later. To push it up the back side, I usually spread these out more um, because it makes it easier. So I, I push them in smaller groups and then <laughs> There it is. See, then we have another row added there. And we 
Snug it up like this.